Kim, and I'm a co-founder of Uncomfort. And I'm, uh, my background is in technology. My partner, who is not here, she's in Belgium. Her name is Diane Juris, and her background is in psychology and uh, clinical hypnosis. So I would like to kind of focus on how Uncomfort was founded and where we are up to this point. So it's a journey of a healthcare virtual reality startup. So some of you are coming from the technology background, some of you are coming from um, more of a, a medical or, or commercial background. So I think this is going to be helpful for anyone who is even a developer who is thinking about starting a startup and, and how you can make this happen. So this is an explanation of our, I don't know if you can hear the sound. A cancer treatment is a huge emotional roller coaster. Anxiety starts at day one and will peak at key moments of the treatment, such as the first biopsy, the day of diagnosis, before surgeries or procedures, before follow-up scans. Anxiety impacts a patient's emotional quality of life, their physiology, and even the biology of the cancer itself. Anxiety also impacts caregivers and family members and medical treatments. Now imagine a lower baseline anxiety in cancer patients and how this could change the entire journey. Imagine that this red line is replaced by the blue. Imagine a tool accessible to every cancer patient in their own language 24-7 with no need for trained professionals. This is what we do. At On Comfort, we re-envision how anxiety is managed throughout the entire cancer journey. On Comfort provides medical teams with a portable, safe, powerful, multilingual tool that allows patients to feel more comfortable during their treatment. We do this by using virtual reality together with evidence-based therapies allowing a patient to dive into an immersive experience while receiving understandable medical information and being trained in simple and efficient anxiety management tools. Pilot data from major cancer centers show that our modules significantly impact a patient's emotional state, their perception of pain, and satisfaction with care. They also impact the flow of clinics and the allocation of human resources. With your help, we can re-envision anxiety management throughout the cancer treatment. But it takes a village. Come and be a part of it. Okay, so I want to talk about my partner first because this is how it all started. My partner actually worked with um, Christy, who you just met before this talk. And she was working for a pain and addiction center at Memorial Hermann. And she found that those people who have who are going through withdrawal syndromes, they are, have very high anxiety, and they oftentimes didn't like to take medication or refuse to take the treatments. And when she heard about the um, anxiety management um, kind of predecessors of the studies that were done in other uh, research institutions, she wanted to try virtual reality on these patients, and she adapted her own um, versions with her recordings of her guided meditation with the existing, um, as you saw, uh, existing um, product, and it was really phenomenal. I mean, the anxiety dropped, and people actually wanted to do it like voluntarily, where you know it never happened before. They wanted to do this thing, and. She and then she moved to MD Anderson, um, as you know, it's probably number one cancer institution in America, uh, in the world, and she was helping these cancer patients going through very painful or anxiety-inducing treatments. Cancer is a very stressful and um, huge life-changing experience, and she was the one who has the um, clinical psychology background with um, focused on hypnosis. She would talk to these patients, and she's, she's polyglot. She speaks five languages. So 
but then she would not be able to help those that were such as like Arabic patients or any other language speaking Chinese patients. And she was limited to herself. She couldn't really help all those thousands of patients that are going through um, the hospital day-to-day -day basis. So she actually reached out to Eric at the Houston Virtual Reality uh, Meetup Group and said, hey, Eric, do you know anybody who is in the uh, virtual reality game development space that can help me to create something that I was kind of envisioning? And uh, this is her sister, and she has a very personal story about that. Her sister went through breast cancer, and she had to be the caretaker of her father who passed away with bone cancer. So she has very personal experience with cancer. And that is when I met her um, at Zion. That's when I met her, and my background is in technology. Um, I studied computer science at University of Texas at Dallas, and um, I also, after that, um, worked for Samsung and telecommunications in Dallas. And then after I went to school for master's in interactive technology at SMU, Guild Hall, um, and then promptly after got a job in Austin working on massively multiplayer online game for three years, which uh, didn't ship. So if you're a developer, you know the pain of developing something for three years and eh, you don't get to see the, <laughs> the light of that. And so it's like, okay, maybe I should take a break. I need to go into teaching because I can see the immediate changes in making difference in the world. When I'm teaching, I can see the twinkles in their eyes, and it was making me feel like I'm making a difference in the world. So I really enjoy teaching um, and various uh, education places. And, and then I got into uh, Game Jam that was conducted by Oculus, who was virtual reality, Gear VR specifically, Game Jam. And at the time, I couldn't really um, connect with a lot of virtual reality developers. There are a lot of developers that I connected here, but I got online and they had a forum and it got us to got me to connect with all these developers all around the United States. So I was in a team of seven people, like people from Washington the state, Florida, Ohio, you name it. So we were just all together doing it all on Skype, on Slack group. So we made a game. And I presented at the virtual reality meetup, and that's how Eric said, okay, you need to talk to Diane, and, and the rest is a history. So that's how Uncomfort was born from then on. We just met, and Diane and I just hit it off because my background is also in mind and body. So I am a yoga instructor, a 500-hour yoga instructor, also a meditation instructor. So that kind of got us started. So... Uncomfort is great, obviously. It's good for everybody in the ecosystem. Good for the patient because it lowers their cost of um, you know, treatment. Hopefully, we'll get to that point. We'll go into more of that uh, later. Um, and then it's a very immersive. It takes you to here and then very anxiety-inducing environment with needles and beeping noises. And it takes you to a very calming state. And it teaches you the tools. And it's a plug-and-play solution, unlike Oculus Rift or Vive, which is very clunky to set up in a hospital environment. Gear VR is a plug-and-play solution. It's mobile, so most people who are dealing with in healthcare, no offense, but they don't like to learn new technology. They just want an easy plug-and-play solution, so it's perfect. And we are science-backed, so we have dozens of oncologists and uh, psychologists who are reading through our scripts and our experiences and giving us feedback directly. And it's tailor-made for moment-to-moment -moment experience. So there is a high peak of anxiety, as you saw in the graph, uh, you know, at the diag diagnosis, at uh, biopsy and treatment and remission, and even at end of life, there is a huge anxiety. And so we tailor-made that through moments, different moments of their journey. And it's a multilingual, as you saw, Diane was very frustrated because there were a lot of patients who couldn't speak English, and they would be given this stack of paper, which was like 70 pages long, 
that describes their, you know, procedure and what they need to know, and they had no idea. You know, if they don't speak the language, and even though you speak English, you know, seventy pages of you know, medical jargon is very difficult to understand. So we really make it very easy for people to understand what's going to happen. Instructional, also maintain, uh, you know, taking care of your own anxiety during uh, the journey. So we're very lucky to have these partners who are uh, willing to. Uh, use our, our prototypes and our uh, modules on uh, this preliminary dye data that we got from Gustav Rossi, Institute Curie, and Leon Bernard, and say, look, they're from uh, mostly in Europe, from Paris, Brussels, and Lyon in France. And we are currently uh, have our champion doctor who is uh, using it at their varicose vein procedure, which I will show you in a minute in the video. Um, and we also have uh, psychologists who are using it for their patients. Um, so, <laughs> if you can imagine, we are about one year old. We started in September eleventh uh, of last year, and so we're a little bit more than a year old now. But since then, we provide uh, we created four different modules for both pediatric and adults in five different languages. So we've been really busy, and um, we also have been pitching at different uh, places, including Bio Europe, and we recently won a C3 prize, which uh, it was incredible because when we read what they were looking for, uh, what we've been working on basically matched right on top of it. It was just kind of sheer, I would say, luck, or just maybe it was just some kind of sign from the special uh, presence. I, we just we, we were just so surprised, and there were about 115 entries, and we were the top five finalists. And we, Diane pitched; she did an incredible job in front of five judges, and um, one of them were Robert Herjavec from uh, Shark Tank. So he got to actually try on our module and has been an amazing kind of um, promoter of our company in going to different media, including Fox Health, um, ABC, and recently I just came back from, um, we were also on KHOU, um, we just, I just got back from LA shooting and doctors uh, show. So it's been really good exposure because we won the first place after um, this has been a great journey. And then... So I will send her the recording. But the French Association, we also won the winner, winning in care and, and uh, Unicare also, we were the finalists. So um, as you saw, the pilot data, it, it was incredible. These partners told us that post-operative stress dropped by 56%, pain levels dropped by 45%, consumption of analgesics dropped by uh, some, over 70%, time in the recovery room was reduced by 62 minutes, and total length of the stay was reduced by 38% or 35%, I'm, I'm sorry, 35%. So these data are preliminary data. It's not a, a super huge numbers. What they do is they do an initial preliminary data, and if uh, the results are good, then they go into a full-blown randomized controlled trial, which we are going into in uh, Europe, um, two different studies for breast cancer patients and uh, for 150 patients each, and also for... Um, mm, IV, IVF in vitro. Apparently, there's a huge, huge anxiety in women who are going through in vitro because they actually have to use needle and they don't feel comfortable. And the anxiety level affects the success rate of the uh, pregnancy. So they are doing a study on that also. So here is our full journey from the conception. Uh, last year, September, we started actually as a limited liability corporation. And we realized that for a company to get funding from a more of a larger VCs and angels, it's best to be based in Delaware. 
So um, we eventually converted to Delaware-based in this year in May. And also it's funny, we applied last, last November uh, at TMCX, it's a huge Texas Medical Center accelerator and, and basically companies that go through it get an amazing exposure and funding opportunities. And we applied as soon as we started, as you can see, we only had like two months in the starting the company. We were very hopeful. And of course we got rejected because we didn't really have any uh, um, uh, you know, demos to show at the time. We just had a really amazing business plan. But uh, they said, okay, we are not ready yet. Why don't you come back when you're ready? So this year, uh, we got in in March. We got in. Uh, we studied at I Corps. It's a very excellent program that was conducted by a National Science Foundation, and uh, they provide education for researchers and uh, engineers to really look at what your product is and to see product market fit. They make you do about a hundred different interviews of your potential customers and stakeholders and ask them whether your product that you are making is really what they want. So you have to just be not into sales mode, but more of a student mode and just ask them to help you. And it's really given us a huge kind of a perspective change into what we thought that they wanted and it give, gave us a, a, a huge reflection and opportunity to meet a lot of people who kind of became our advisors afterwards. So, and it's a free um, program. So I highly recommend you, if you want to go into healthcare, um, to look into iCourse. And they do, I believe, quarterly or biannually. And we got into Johnson and Johnson Labs at Texas Medical Center. It's um, it's a it, they have a wet lab in the back and they have it in the front area. It's a very fancy place, which I will show you in the next slide. And then in September we won a Stellas Prize, which gave us a huge exposure, which was at the Stanford University. And we just heard that recently, so we got rejected last year in November. We reapplied this November. And so they just called us and said, you know what, you guys sound pretty good now. Uh, we're going to give you a chance. And so we just did an interview. We're waiting for their call, but we're, I'm pretty confident we got it this time. So this is the office space that we are in currently, and it's a very inspirational. And not only that, I think where you are working is very important because it gives you an exposure to uh, the people in the medical uh, industry. To, um, we get doctors coming through here all the time and who are, who are our customers. So I get to give them a demo right there. And um, it's a great place to feel inspired all the time. And uh, here is Robert Herjavec trying our module at the C3 Prize pitch. And the module that he's trying is uh, geared towards pediatric patients who are going through chemotherapy. And unlike some games that they might play on their phone during chemotherapy and the infusion room, we actually give them a, kind of an education of what chemo is in a very easy to understand language. And they use the chemo juice to target their own cancer cells. So not only that they are, you know, enjoying and, and kind of taking away from this, this room, they might see needles and feeling uneasy, they're kind of in a place where they are really focusing and taking part in their treatment rather than being an observer. So it really empowers them. And so here are all these friends and the customers and various people that have supported us throughout this time. I wish I added more squares of you know different portraits. I will work on that, but it takes time. Um, and I think that there's a huge opportunity in the medical space. I mean, we have done some kind of a pilot, I guess, uh, research of on our own. We found that dentistry, they need a lot of um, help. And we are currently working on a module specifically for dental uh, patients. And uh, they are a pain, it's a pain center where they do uh, lumbar puncture 
for a very painful lumbar puncture for painkiller. And um, this is our champion doctor, Dr. Fuddy. He's inserting this giant needle into people's veins to do, do local anesthesia. And it's about 9 point out of 10 point scale of pain. So as you can see, that needle is giant, <laughs> and they puncture multiple times. So this is basically the end of the story. We have about three minutes, but if you have any question, we have a demo down on the floor, so come by anytime. And you can also follow us on social media and send us an email. Thank you so much. If you have any question, we have about two minutes.